Al Michaels, the 2021 winner of the Ford C. Frick Award. Al, congratulations. Tell us what you're feeling. You know, Robert, thank you so much. And, and it's funny, I, I, I look back at my career and uh, I don't have very many regrets. It's been a great run. The one thing maybe that I regret most of all, though, if there isn't a regret, it's the fact that after doing all of this baseball in the 60s and 70s and 80s and a little bit in the 90s, I was never in a place, never in a network that had the rights. Yeah. And so not having done this now for, for 25 years, I'm sure there are some people who, who will say, what? He does <laughs> or he did baseball. But uh, I loved baseball. I built my career around it. Uh, when I started back in 1968 with the Hawaii Islanders of the Pacific Coast League, so this is a this is a great thrill for me to be able to to look back to think about all of those years. It's almost as if some other person did all of these baseball games, but this kind of brings me full circle, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate this honor. Al Joel Sherman here. First of all, congratulations. Second of all, uh, I opened the show and I said. I, it feels to me like for a broadcaster, baseball is the best canvas because what people complain about these days, pace of game, allows someone who can paint pictures and tell a story to really do it where maybe the other sports don't allow it. Did you find that since you've done, or done it all, does baseball fill that for you? Absolutely, Joe. I mean, people say, you know, baseball has to be the toughest. To me, it was always the easiest and certainly the most satisfying because you can paint pictures. And I think I grew up, as did many of uh, my predecessors, uh, doing radio. And that's where you really learned how to paint a picture. That's when you were able to use verbs. Uh, television is something, uh, uh, it's a different animal in so many ways, especially with baseball, where you're really uh, doing ellipses in a way. You're doing the dot, dot, dot. And you don't have to describe everything perfectly. But I think having that radio background in baseball has served me so well in every sport through all of these years and uh, you know you can you can you're on every night in baseball and you can tell stories and you can weave stories in and out and uh, I go back to you know growing up in Brooklyn and uh, I listened to Vince Scully from the time I was six or seven years mm -hmm. old and, and pretty much modeled the early part of my career after Vinny and I'm so happy to you know, to have this award, something that Vinny's won. I mean, they should name every award after <laughs> Vince Scully in, in broadcasting. <laughs> so uh, to me, this is this is unbelievably meaningful. Al, it's Ron Darling. Congratulations. And if you're in Bel Air, I'm very jealous uh, right now. <laughs> I was just thinking, Al, is um, that you've known for so many things. But what I'll always remember you for is when you came back from the 1989 World Series after the earthquake and you had to welcome the baseball crowd back you know, on the broadcast. You're almost presidential that night. Well, I appreciate I, I thank you so much, Ron, and uh, you know, love listening to you and have all of these years uh, uh, on the Mets and, and on TBS. I think the interesting thing about that World Series was I had lived in the Bay Area for a lot of years. And even though at that point I'd moved to Southern California, but I understood the Bay Area. And I know that there were a lot of people around the country who said, oh, they should cancel it. Uh, it was a disaster. They really don't need to start this thing again. That wasn't the feeling at all in the Bay Area. And I felt I needed to reflect the fact, and I think I, I used the words about getting up off the deck like a fighter who'd been knocked down. They're up off the deck. We are back. We are attempting to return to some sense of normalcy. And I felt that was the important thing to bring up at that particular time. It was a disaster. Uh, it was terrible. The, the billions of dollars. Uh, dozens of lives were lost, uh, in particular over in the uh, the collapse of the freeway in Oakland. But I thought that uh, around the country, some people felt, well, why are they starting this again? I, I felt it was important to uh, kind of, kind of uh, let people into what the mindset was of the people in the Bay Area who were happy to see that the World Series begin again. Al, you mentioned uh, getting your start in baseball and really cutting your broadcasting teeth in the game. You had the, uh, the fortune of being a part of the Cincinnati Reds and getting a front row seat of those, the formative years of the big red machine of that Cincinnati Reds uh, franchise. What were those days like? And what do you, when you look back at that time, what, do you, what memories do you have? Well, I had so many great mentors coming up. Uh, going back before Cincinnati, what led to that job is the Hawaii Islanders in the Pacific Coast League, of course, uh, now I'm talking uh, Ron Darling's uh, uh, <laughs> world here with Hawaii. But in Hawaii, the last two years I was there, two of the three years, Chuck Tanner 
was the manager. And he'd go on to win a World Series with the We Are Family Pirates in 1979. So he was the first mentor I had. And then when I went to Cincinnati, Sparky Anderson, Pete Rose, Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, Joe Morgan, just to be around those guys, I felt like I got a PhD in baseball. <laughs> and even before that, I, I learned so much uh, uh, about baseball in the early years just by listening to Vince Scully. So between Scully, Tanner, Sparky, Pete, Johnny, Tony, Joe, uh, by the time I was, before I was 30 years old, I felt like I had a baseball PhD. Well, Al, I know Bob Costas is a, a former colleague of yours, and uh, now you guys are now part of the same club. Uh, Bob Costas uh, joins us, uh, rejoins us now here. Bob, why don't you take it away? Hey, Al, I'm going to say the same thing to you that Vin Scully a few years ago said to me. Welcome to the club. Thank you, Bob, and I, I appreciate it so much. And, of course, you and I have been great pals for a long time. I'm so happy when, when you receive this honor. And... Um, it's it's wonderful. It's just great to be a, a part of the club. And I, I, you know, I saw the early part of the show today and talking about the guys who have won this thing. And, you know, so many of them we grew up with, so many of them uh, have mm -hmm. become great pals of ours. Uh, there'll be other guys like Joe Buck, who will definitely be in sooner than later. So uh, to, to be in this pantheon and you and I both know, having shared this great love of baseball when we were kids and and looking and, and idolizing and modeling ourselves after certain guys to be a part mm -hmm. of that group is fantastic. You know, one thing I want to get in here, Al, don't mean to embarrass you. We know all the great calls. Guys, we've heard all the great Al Michaels calls both today and on the Sounds of Baseball program that Tom Perducci and I did a few months ago, and we're going to replay it tonight in honor of Al Michaels. But one of the things that may be lost, Al has this wry sense of humor, and way back... <laughs> <laughs> and that may be putting it mildly, but <laughs> way, way back when Al was the radio voice of the Giants in the 70s and the Giants were not very good and the weather was awful at Candlestick Park and it was the fans were suffering through it. Those few who were there and there was one particular game. Let's say they're playing the Dodgers. Doesn't matter. The Giants are losing nine to nothing. And here's what Al says at the end of a half inning. So after six, the Dodgers nine and the Giants nine. Unfortunately, the Giants are keeping score in German. <laughs> well, you know, at that point, you, 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 that's the kind of thing that might get you fired today. But in those years, you could get away with it, especially when Har Horace Stoneham uh, owned the team and he was running out of money and he wasn't paying that much attention to what was being said on the air. But I think Tom Verducci was talking about one of my favorite moments with the Giants when uh, we were playing the Padres in August and candlestick is just horrible. Uh, and there, I, I don't know how many people were there, but every night I was getting the, uh, the attendance figure. And, um, I, I looked at the thing and it was whatever it said, 2,340. Oof. And I looked at it and I said, you know what? I said, why don't I just tell you who's here? <laughs> Mr. And Mrs. Jim McAlpine have come down from Marin County. Harvey Faluki and the family have driven up from San Jose. They came up with a the dog. They left the dog in the car, but the windows were open. And, and you, you, had, you had to make jokes like that because that team was so bad and that stadium was so awful. And this was coming off my three years in Cincinnati with full houses and bench and rows and a, and a, a team full of Hall of Famers. It was a, it was a different deal. Al, I've already uh, gotten in touch with my contacts uh, in Cooperstown. We're getting you the presidential suite at the Otisaga. I, I've got, I've got the nice. reservations for every night we're there at the Blue Mingo. I got you taken care of. You're, you're the best. And, and uh, is there a Four Seasons in Cooperstown? Or, well, the, this is the, the Four Seasons of Cooperstown, right? Uh, yeah, it's about a five-hour drive away in Manhattan. <laughs> and and, and am, I, am I able to eat food with gluten in it? Is that possible? <laughs> well, well, yeah, I think they have gluten. Jill, 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 Jill Costas will be going gluten-free and trying to make sure I do the same. But, Al, we all know you're never, you're never going there. You're never touching a vegetable, and you're never going gluten-free. I will make sure that the Blue Mingo has a special Al Michaels menu. Bob, we that ship has sailed many years ago. <laughs> Bob, thanks for uh, helping us uh, honor Al Michaels. Thank you for joining us. And once again, Al, congratulations. And we look forward to seeing you in Cooperstown next summer. Let's hope everything, uh, the world gets back on its axis. Yes, sir. And we can all gather and have a great time.